Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I will continue and actually finish finally my web exploitation series. So this is going to be the last video, the 13th video and in this video we're going to talk about DNS zone transfer attacks. Now DNS, this kind of attacks on DNS uh, is not uh, strictly related to the web because we are talking about a different protocol, about the DNS protocol. However, I wanted to include it on the web exploitation series because sometimes when we have to do a penetration test and we can interact with a DNS server, which could happen, for example, in an active box machine, in the OSCP exam, or in the real world. So anytime interact with a DNS, this attack is useful to know and it's also really simple to try it out. It's not hard, it's just a simple command, so it's more about the theory that is behind it, you just need to know about it in order to test it when you get the chance to interact with a DNS server. So I hope the video is enjoyable, we will do some laboratories to showcase the attack in a Docker environment, like I did in the previous um, example, in the previous videos, and that's it. And since this is the last video of the web exploitation series, in the future we can talk about different arguments and specifically I want to start the Linux and the Windows series. So more OSCP preparation in different contexts. So I hope the video is enjoyable, if you have any feedback please let me know, please share this video, share the playlist and just share my channel with the people you know who are also interested in learning this. And that's it, we can actually start the video now. So we can go into the directory, we go cd13 zone transfer attack into the content. As, us as usual we have a docker compose file. In this case it's a single docker compose file that calls a standard docker file. So we don't need a custom docker file because we will just use the default image of ubuntu slash bind9. Now Bind9 is an open source implementation of a DNS server. So this is really useful to have and we can just start it. How do we start it? We can say docker compose app, docker compose app and it's gonna download the image and it's gonna compile and it's gonna start the docker. So now the docker is running and we can actually run the command. Now there's not much to say about the specific command that we will use, it's really not that hard. However, what I want to talk about before showing the command is uh, conceptually what's the difference between a DNS zone transfer attack and a virtual host enumeration. And I want to discuss this because I think it can be confusing at first. So let we have those two scenarios, so I'm gonna put a text mode here. We have like virtual host and DNS zone transfer and DNS zone transfer. So when it comes to a virtual host we have something like a base domain, so we can say oscp.exam and then this base domain can be extended with various virtual host. For example we can have a dev.oscp.exam, we can have a prod.oscp.exam, we can have a mail.oscp.exam, a secret, so we can have multiple subdomains from the same domain. Now why these are related to virtual host? Well these kind of things are related to virtual host when these are handled by the web server, which means by the HTTP protocol. So as I showed in the virtual host enumeration videos, if you can access different web servers through these kind of things which belong, maybe they, they map to the same IP for example, they map to the same IP address, but they allow you to access different applications, different web applications. In this context we are talking about virtual host and they are characterized by the fact that they are present in the host header within the HTTP request. So in the HTTP request you put here dev.scp.exam or mail.scp.exam and by putting different values within the host header you get access to different web application. So that's the key. Now when you talk about the DNS and DNS zone transfers, the idea is that we can have the same exact strings, so the same exact like uh, do domains and subdomains. 
However, they have a different meaning, so it's really critical to understand this. Syntactically, they look the same, it's always dev.osp.exam, prod.osp.exam. So at first, uh, if you just have the string, right, if you just have the string, uh, you can use this uh, as a virtual host or as a domain name, but they are two different things. However, they are connected and we will see it how. So the, the thing is that if you're talking about a DNS uh, and a DNS zone transfer, the idea is that to each of these domain, thanks to the DNS protocol, there will be associated other information. And typically these informations are either other domain names, so other names, IP addresses, or TXT file, TXT like text, just raw data. So while VirtualHost use the HTTP protocol to handle different web applications, you can, so like the idea is that this maps to a VHOST, so VHOST1, VHOST2, VHOST3, and these are handled by the web server. So for example, they are handled by Nginx, which takes care of mapping. Okay, this VirtualHost is mapped to this application. This string is mapped to that application. So this is the con concept of VirtualHost. While the idea of DNS on transfer and DNS is that each of these string is mapped to another domain, an IP address or a TXT file. So this means is that if you interact with a machine that has a DNS server running, you can do this sort of attack called a DNS zone transfer. And the idea is that a DNS zone is a series of mapping which has the same basic domain. So like all the domains of osp.exam are handled by this DNS server, which handles the DNS zone osp.exam. When you do a DNS zone transfer, you are asking the DNS server, look, can you give me all your entries associated to this zone? Can you give me all the entries associated to the domain OSP.exam, if the DNS is not properly configured, it will not ask you for authentication. It will just give you the zone. So this is why it's called a DNS zone transfer attack. It is an attack because we are not authenticated. We are not supposed to have the information that tells us like, okay, we have these domains because maybe we just know the initial domain, right? We just know this. We don't know that there exists a mail.osp.exam. We don't know that. So like if we just have this, we can ask a DNS server, look, can you give me all the domains associated with osp.exam? And if the server is not properly configured and it, it doesn't ask us for authentication, it's insecure, it can just give, it can just give us this list. And you can say, look, dev.tcp.exam is mapped to this IP address. Prod.tcp.exam is mapped to this IP address. And by doing so, we actually enumerate the domains and the subdomains of the application. Once we have those domains, then we can use uh, VirtualOS, the VirtualOS mechanism, maybe to access different web servers. This means that a DNS zone transfer attack works in a different protocol, the DNS protocol. However, it allows us to enumerate the virtual host in a much smarter way, if this is possible, of course. Because remember, in the virtual host enumeration video, typically to enumerate virtual host, you need to have a word list with all the possible values, and then you check one by one if each of those values is valid or not. With a DNS zone transfer attack, if the DNS is not properly configured, we can just have straight the, the list, just straight handed to us. It's really, really powerful, but remember, this is a critical point, it uses the DNS protocol. So it's not regarding HTTP. It is a different mechanism altogether. So how do we do this sort of attack? Now, in this case, for example, I have a 1337 running, so I have this 1337 running on my machine. So what can I do with that? This is the port of the Docker. Well, the command to perform a DNS on transfer is dig. Then you write AXFR to say, give me all the zone. You put the name of the zone. In this case, it's osp.exam because this is how I configure the server. You put a dash P1337 because it is the port that the DNS server listens to. 
typically this is the 53 port, 53, but in my case it's a 1337, and then you put at 127.0.0.1 to say the IP address of the DNS server. So, since I run the DNS with the Docker, and the Docker is running on my host interface, on my local host interface, I can do this. Once I hit this, notice what do I get. So this is the typical output of a DNS query, and in this case, the zone transfer was successful, because we obtain 9 DNS records. What does this tell us? This tells us that this DNS server is not secure, because it is supposed to ask for authentication. But we are not authenticated, we do not have any credential to do this, however we still manage to get the zone. This is highly insecure and should not be possible to do it in a real production DNS. So what do we get in particular? Well, we get every sort of record that was configured within the DNS. Now, some of these records are for internal use, like the SOA, which is like uh, that determines the configuration of the DNS. Other are for the IP mapping, so for example these four, 1, 2, 3 and 4, and what do they tell us? They tell us, for example, that dev.scp.exam is mapped to this IP address, and that mail.scp.exam is mapped to this IP address, and that for example, we have uat.scp.exam, which is mapped to this IP address. Now, this is extremely precious information, because now we have information regarding some of the IP in the internal network of the, of the server, and also some of the domain names used, dev.scp, mail.scp. Then we have, for example, this ns1, which is also another name server, and we have a lot of information. Notice also the mail server, this mail, so when we mail this domain, we get this mail.scp.exam, and the ns is the ns1, and also we have a txt, so we have a txt record saying this is a secret. Of course, this is an example, I just put a this is a secret, I wrote this line, but the idea is that we could find a lot of stuff, a lot of sensitive and private data that we should not have access to. So this is basically the idea. And essentially this covers this kind of attack. It's really simple, however it is critical that you know it. Now, what can you do with these domains, right? Well, first of all, now we have information about the internal IP addresses, and now they map to the single services. At this point, what you can do is, for example, you can test if there exists this virtual host within this server. So let's say that you have access to this IP address. Then you can try to access the virtual host dev.scp.exam using this time the HTTP protocol. So even though DNS records and virtual host are different things, most of the time they are configured like to be sort of like to work synchronously. So this means what I'm trying to say here is that people, what, what do they do? They put the same value for the virtual host and for the DNS record. This is because when you go to the browser, for example, to dev.scp.exam, what the browser does essentially is, first it does a DNS query to get the IP address of the server, and then it uses the same domain value to perform a virtual host query with the HTTP protocol. So first it uses the domain as a DNS value, and then it, it uses the domain as a virtual host value to actually connect to the proper virtual host. So now that you have this list, you can start to do the HTTP queries with the host field to, for example, devoscp.exam, and if there is a virtual host on that, it will reply to you like a web application, and then you can access maybe new applications that are vulnerable, you can find vulnerabilities there, and you can elevate your privileges. So this is the idea, once again I'm gonna repeat it one last time and then I will finish the video. To perform a DNS on transfer attack is really easy, you can use dig. Dig is the command to interact with the DNS, AXFR is to say, look, give me a zone transfer, I want a DNS zone, and DNS zone contain all the records for a given zone. Here you put the zone of interest, which in this case is oscp.exam, and then you put the port and the host, so this is the IP of the DNS server. Once you do this, it gives you a list of DNS records 
these DNS records contain a list of subdomains. Once you have this list of subdomains, you know, first of all, the relative IP addresses, if there are TXT entries, what do they mean, and stuff like that. And then, after you have this, you can do, you can proceed with virtual host enumeration. And if you don't know what is virtual host enumeration, you can just watch my video on virtual host enumeration. So, this is it for this video. This concludes the web exploitation series. As I said, it was a pretty fast video because this vulnerability is pretty simple. And in terms of like the configuration here, so just notice here that in my configuration, what do, do I have here? I have an extremely simple configuration where I say, look, this zone is handled by this file. And in this file, I just put all these records. So this is how you use the bind9 open source DNS server to configure a zone. The problem here was that the DNS transfer, the DNS zone transfer was not authenticated. In real world, you should always authenticate stuff like this because otherwise you would leak sensitive data. So we are done, we are officially, officially done with the web exploitation series. We've seen a lot of different stuff because, I mean, look at this, we've seen 13 chapters where the first were introductory, then we went into the attacks. So in, like instead of doing enumeration, we went straight into the main vulnerabilities, which are SQL injections, directory traversal, file inclusion, file upload, common injection and cross-site scripting. These are the main vulnerabilities and typically for passing the OSCP exam, knowing these vulnerabilities will be enough most of the time, unless you really hit uh, you hit, you hit a really hard exam set, but typically you are covered with this basic. And then we saw all the enumeration aspects with enumeration of files and directories, enumeration of virtual host, and enumeration of parameters. In the last two chapters, we saw brute forcing using the legba tool written in Rust, very efficient and fun. And in this video, we saw how to perform DNS zone transfer attacks using uh, uh, dig with uh, an insecure DNS server. So this is it, of course, I mean, there are other topics in this, uh, there could be other topics in this series, but I'm ending it here so I can cover other stuff because this is already a great introductory level. If you know all this stuff, you are almost ready for the web part of OSCP. Later, I'm gonna start to do Linux and Windows series, because those are really important topics in the um, context of penetration testing and security, offensive security. So I hope uh, the video was interesting. I hope the series was interesting. If you have any feedback, please let me know and uh, have a good day.